Check out this, uh, this nice list of players. These guys are all really good, right? Uh, they have a couple of things in common for the most part. They all have a lot of talent. Uh, and with the exception of Ben Simmons, unavailability. Kawhi Leonard's going to sit for his fourth straight game because of rest slash uh, load, load management. management. they got to manage the load. I love that phrase, by the way. <laughs> load, manage the load management. Yeah. I've got to incorporate that into my personal life. Load, I'm sorry, I can't, <laughs> I can't take out the trash. <laughs> load management <laughs> is at play. Uh, four straight games now for the Raptors, who have been really good without him, by the way, 11-2 and two when Kawhi doesn't play. Is there any concern for you that this is cropping up kind of in the middle of the season when he had been playing? Hadn't played back-to-backs yet, but he had been playing fairly steadily so far. I actually think this is the right time for them to enter into load, man- what is it? load, load management. management protocol. To me, it makes sense now. You do it now at the midway point, a little bit after the season. You don't want this to be something that lingers deep down the stretch of the season, Matt. And if it happened earlier in the year, I would have been concerned that he didn't return from his injury-filled season of a year ago to the level he should have. He's been fantastic when he's played. Mm -hmm. I don't know that if you're the Raptors, there's a whole lot of measure that needs to be taken now because you understand the, the, the real test of this season for them is what can they do in the postseason with a healthy Kawhi when he won't have to worry about back-to-backs at all. Right, right. Load management is not a concern in the postseason. I would, I would think load management would go out the window in mid-April. Well, the other advantage of it is I think he's played enough to develop chemistry with that unit. But the other advantage from Toronto's standpoint is other guys get to develop confidence and, and trust amongst that rotation. So a lot of those young guys, I mean, you look at – what's happened with Pascal Siakam and his rise this year, right? Uh, Ananobi is also a, another young player that's going to get opportunities because of this. And so other guys have stepped up, uh, and now it makes your roster, the whole rotation, more for, formidable. Like coming in, most people thought, oh, you know, Boston was going to be the deepest team. Well, I, I think Toronto is the deepest team in the Eastern Conference because of that. And ultimately, as Sekou said, look, this is all, they're going to be judged on what they do in the postseason. We, we've sure. been down this path before with Toronto and regular season success. Right, right. Uh, ultimately, two things are going for them. One, this is probably the best team they put forth mm-hmm. uh, in, in this latest run of success that they've had. And two, they don't have LeBron James lurking in the Eastern Conference anymore. So they probably have to feel pretty good about the opportunity to finally get over the hump and get out of that Eastern Conference. The boogeyman is gone. Yeah. <laughs> He's gone to Los Angeles. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, as I mentioned, they're 11-2 and two without him, which is as impressive as anything that Kawhi's done this season when he's been on the floor. Yeah, and think about the time they've played without Kyle Lowry as well. Yeah. Um, and that would be my only mild concern for the Raptors, is that Kawhi and Kyle Lowry, have they gotten enough time in the regular season to be in a group come playoff time where they're able to play off each other? But they're both veterans, yeah. all-stars, you know, guys who've played at such a high level. I'm not as worried about that with with these two guys in particular as I would be if it was a different dynamic between the two. And they're both, these guys are seasoned pros. They they understand what it'll take to play off of each other and and to be in the the right space come playoffs. Also still, what, 32, I think, games left for the Raptors. If they get them playing together for the bulk of the last 20, that's plenty of time to get the chemistry between those two uh, right for Kawhi to be the guy he needs to be in the playoffs because, as Greg said, that's really what's going to tell the story here. Raptors are now in that weird scenario where they trail the Bucks by percentage points even though they lead Milwaukee by a half game in the standings. You look at the standings. It's what I can't understand, how do you put when, the, when the Bucks team, ahead? How number can you one, be one when you but you're are a half, half game, game back behind? Because it's percentage. Winning percentage is better. No, nah, but winning percentage I, I don't make the better. rules. I'm just telling you that's how it works out. <laughs> Record should be better. I don't disagree. I'd like it I to mean, be. I mean, it, it, it matters. Win percentage should matter if you play, if you have ties. Well, you, you, they would be the same if you had a tie. Not necessarily. Well, oh, I see what you're saying. If yeah, it worked if, out, if you had ties on the, in terms yeah. of games could end in a tie. Right. Then win percentage would matter more. But because. Yeah, I agree. It's confusing. Yeah. and Because if the season ended today, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the Raptors would be the one seed. Well, if the season ended today, it would be all kinds of screwy because yeah. everybody's <laughs> played a different number of games. But, um, uh, winning ingredients. Delivered by Papa John's, the Pacers are rested, fully healthy, and have two of the best big men in the East in Miles Turner and DeMontis Sabonis. Turner starts, Sabonis usually doesn't. Both have been effective in different ways. Weirdly, they're a net negative when they share the floor together. 
How do their futures factor into Indy's future? Well, the, the good thing for the Indiana Pacers is this is a problem that they don't have to truly concern themselves with for at least another year, season and a half. Right. Um, you know, Sabonis is a young, developing big man, as is Miles Turner, but they're two very different stages <laughs> of their careers. Right now, Sabonis is, is really putting forth the effort he is and the production he is at a discount. You know you won't have him at this rookie price forever. Whereas Miles Turner is working into that next phase of his career where I think, GA, you, you want to see another step or two from Miles Turner. Physically, you, you thought he maybe would be further along right now than he is. But I kind of like it. I kind of like that these guys are coming along the way they are because it gives you an opportunity to really gauge the ceiling you have in both guys and then make some decisions down the road on who goes where, who stays, or, or whether or not you can have a future with both these guys together. I don't know why they haven't played better when the two of them have been on the floor, which is not a huge sample size, under 45 minutes total over the course of the season. But well, how, how, such well, Why would we even skills. have that conversation if they played 45 minutes together? <laughs> you can play 45 minutes in one game. So yep. to, to say to, to draw a conclusion well, on 45 minutes is a bit absurd. Let, let me ask the, the second <laughs> part of that. Why aren't they playing together more often? Well, uh, some of, they seem to have complementary skills. Well, I, I think some of it might have to do with the other guys on the roster. You know, Bogdanovich has been really good for them yep. this year. Uh, some of the other players on that roster have played well for them this year. That, there's a reason why they're right now looking at trying to have home court in the first round because they've got a complete roster. And so from a matchup standpoint, sometimes it's not always about whether they can play together. It's about, okay, we got to match up with this other team that's also pretty good. They might go small. So we've got to put a lineup out there that will allow us to match up with them and have success. So mm -hmm. some, now if you told me, hey, they've been on the floor to get this year four or 500 minutes, okay, now that to me that's a, a sample size that tells me, okay, there are issues there. And even then, I don't know that it's their fault. It no, could no, be I'm not it. saying it is. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like, but that would tell me, okay, that there's an issue. We haven't devised the scheme that will allow them to function together. Because if you think about it, they both have perimeter ability. Uh, Turner's actually probably better on the perimeter. You oh, know, for Not sure. the back yeah. to the basket score that, that uh, Sabonis is. But I, I don't really look at it as a matter of them functioning well together. I think they're, they're fine together. And ultimately, this is about the team. And right now, their team is pretty damn good. They're playing good basketball. They're a three seed. They've improved from a year ago. And... You know, in all fairness, Oladipo hasn't been quite as good this year as he was statistically as he was last and, season. And he was hurt a bunch. Yeah, and he's yeah. been hurt. So, like, that also had, plays a role in those two guys. Your best player is not on the floor for an extended period of time. So, if I'm the Indiana Pacers, fan base, coaching staff, players, uh, organization, I'm thrilled because I think we're ahead of schedule. I don't look at it the other way. I think they're ahead of where I did not see them being a three seed at this stage of the season especially with Oladipo having missed as much time and not being nearly as good as he was a season ago. I think they've complemented each other as well. We, we forget that, you know, you got to factor in the minutes that Sabonis is on the floor and who's on the floor against him mm -hmm. in that time. As a starter, Miles Turner's numbers might not look the way people want him to. Sure. But he's playing against a different level of player for, for many of his minutes. The, the part about both of them I like is you don't know what their finished product is yet. We don't know, you know, Sabonis is a, a hybrid, you know, maybe more of a hybrid than even Turner is. And mm -hmm. so that allows you to play these guys in different spaces on the floor in terms of the, the area they occupy. We don't know how much better Turner's face-up game will become in the next year and a half. We don't know if the ceiling is closer for Sabonis than it might be for some other young big. So you have to, to me, have a little bit of patience when you're evaluating these guys and not rush to come up with some – you know, metric that, that makes it look better than what it is. These guys are developing young players at a, at a very tricky position in this league right now. And to me, you don't want to do anything to, to curtail the continued development for both of them in whatever lane they're going to be. And, and keep, they're both 22. Yeah. They're oh, yeah. 22 they're very years young. old. Yeah. They're really young. And generally speaking, you know, they weren't, you know, top two picks where everyone said these guys are can't miss. From a developmental standpoint, they have, they have, I think they're ahead of their own curves or what was expected of them when they were drafted. Uh, there's a reason why, you know, Sabonis got traded. And I think 
if you're and in Indiana is a patient franchise, they're thrilled with their development. I mean, because they're impact players on a on an elite team in the Eastern Conference at 22 years of age. Both of them in the rotation, like, and ultimately that's how you judge these guys. They have been what I would consider success stories for the oh, organization. For sure. Yeah, and I mean they they've got the kind of problems you want, where uh, I don't even have to think about Sabonis's contract uh, until the end of next year, and even then I don't have to think about it because somebody else gets to set the market because he's going to be a restricted, restricted free agent. Yeah, trying to avoid the sweep tonight uh, by the Toronto Raptors. Thaddeus Young said, in order to be in that class, we have to beat those teams, and we haven't done it yet. They're trying to. Join that, uh, at least that perceived upper echelon in the Eastern Conference. Speaking of best players, news on Anthony Davis today. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski, Wojnarowski. Just call him Woj. Yeah, Woj. <laughs> reported uh, that Butcher. Anthony Davis has seen the hand specialist he was uh, scheduled to see. There is a fracture in his hand, but it's not as bad as feared, so he could return as early as next week. It's going to be reevaluated every 48 to 72 hours or so. And in the meantime, Pelicans have a challenge ahead of them. Pistons in New Orleans tonight, and then that schedule gets very rough for them. Um, considering where they are in the conference in which they play, how important is this stretch? At least some of those games without AD. I, honestly, I think it's going to determine whether or not they have a chance to make the postseason. Uh, if, if, you know, initially I'd heard four weeks that he could potentially be out. I mean, I, if he misses four weeks, I don't see any scenario where well, they're, they're, they're going to make it. They're saying more likely like a week. A week. I, I, listen, I think they can withstand that. But uh, to your point, the Thunder, Spurs, Rockets, Nuggets, Spurs, I mean, those are all high-level teams. Uh, I, I do think they're going to find a way to win a few of those games. Miritich getting back into a, a real groove for them is going to be important. Uh, and, and they st and again, to me, I think this team, even though they've had some injuries, I think there's a lot of talent on this team. I, I do think from a talent standpoint, they're a playoff team. And for me, Seiko, it's been a little perplexing why we haven't, even though they've had the injuries, why they haven't been more consistent. I, I think one of the issues they've had is the consistency of personnel, like you mentioned. Miritich going out and, and missing games early hurt him because he was the guy who stretched the floor and gave him a different dynamic. But there, there's no logical explanation for a team with Anthony Davis as his backbone to be as inconsistent in terms of performance as these guys have been this year. And this is a group that's coming back off of a really good season with a nice playoff run. If you're, if you're the Pelicans, how do you attack the upcoming schedule and then the schedule looming off in the distance when you know this is a pivotal summer for you? Mm -hmm. if, you if ever there was a team that needed – to turn a corner as a group and to be on a certain kind of trajectory, it's this team. And I'm sure Alvin Gentry is as confused as anybody as to why these guys can't find a way to get into the right kind of space and play well at a high level like some other teams we've seen take that next step. Utah is back in that zone where we thought they would be this year. Milwaukee in the east, Denver, you know, at the top of the Western Conference standings. I think our expectation for the Pelicans is far greater than what their reality has been this year. It's all based on that Portland series, really. One thing that has been consistent is their defense has been consistently bad. <laughs> what, to 27, I mean, that, if you want to point to something, Keeping it real. the injuries are legit. Certainly, Alfred Payton yeah. missed a ton of time when they were trying to work him in. Uh, and you mentioned Miritich, who's been back and yeah. forth in the lineup. But the defense has been consistently pretty terrible most of the season. And, and the reality is a lot of the top teams are dealing with the same kind of injuries. Sure concerns yep. that they have, and yet they've been able to withstand it and still have, have success. Absolutely. All right, more Game Time Live on the way coming up. Your chance to choose the next attribute for our perfect player this week. We look at athleticism. Is Russell Westbrook the most athletic player in the league? See what our guys have to say when we come back.